spring valve and a retainer. Now this this one has no way to get to it from the other side like some of them do. So in order to get this roll pin out, I find something that fits inside the inside of that roll pin. Just enough snug of a fit that you can tap it down. You're gonna have to be super careful when you're doing it because it will break off and if you break it off and you're screwed. I'm gonna tap this down into there where it's got a bite on it and then I use a pair of end cutters to pull up on it like I'll show you when I get it in there. Okay, I guess I should have shown where it, the roll pin goes. Anyway, drive this in there just enough and then I get the end cutters on here. Don't go so much that you break it off. You use it as a heel bar and pull it up to where you can get to it. And then, then you can uh, get it out usually fairly easily. All right, the, uh, the roll pin's gonna go in between here. It's gonna hold this valve from coming out. I don't need to shove that thing all the way in there. Just needs to be flush. This is the adjustable uh, type, so this spring goes around the tip of that valve that's sticking up there. The pointed end faces out, and then our retainer is also an adjustment. And what it's doing is it's pushing on the cone of this, and it adjusts it in and out. So 730 seconds on this screw. And my adjustment was 338 thousandths from the base here to the top of the screw. You can also see where it used to be so I can get pretty close. And then if we wanted to adjust this, if we came out, that would bring it up. That's kind of a weaker spring. So that would uh, firm up the shifts, I believe. I think it works opposite of what you think. Okay, the spring that was on the inside, firmer, uh, longer makes firmer, shorter shifts. The spring on the outside, stronger spring makes uh, longer, softer shifts. So we want to set this back to 338 thousandths. Let's see what a half turn did. Okay, half turn changed at 20 something, 26 thousandths. That's pretty close, 343 right there. I'm just gonna leave it right there. Our manual valve goes in and uh, this accumulator is just like all the others. This one is the early style. It's aluminum. It has a metal sealing ring on it. 
these can be a little fun to get in there so I'll do this off a of camera you just got to compress this down and there's uh, other deals that you can do in the rest of the video so different things you can do for different kinds of shifts you got to push this down far enough to get the e-clip in and then it's going to slide up and be down inside of there okay that's it for this valve body oh, and here's our separator plate got the notch there Okay, the variable pitch pump on the back side here is a in plug. Have a roll pin. I was hoping that gasket wouldn't come off, but it looks like it's going to. I don't want to rip it, so I'm going to go ahead and take it off if I can. Okay. Pressure regulator valve. Now, I was looking at a, another early pressure regulator valve. And I'll have pictures of it. But this land right here is wider. And where the heck are you? Right there is a groove through the valve. So there's a an orifice through the valve. So the uh, only difference is I noticed on the valve. And while I got this up here, I guess I should go ahead and put this on there. You may or may not have horseshoe shims on your valve. And then there's the spring seat. And the fingers go up. Spring needs to go around that. Yeah, I'm going to drop in there. There we go. And the spring goes on top. I have our boost valve. Probably not a bad idea to put some grease on that to keep that from coming out. And the retainer is going to go on top. And we want the short end of the taper of the tips of our snap ring up towards us. Let's see if I can do this out here on camera. It was kind of tough coming out. It was not quite enough room get that snap ring compressed all the way and the uh, boost valve did not want to come out it's like it's been dinged a little bit damn sure that that snap rings all the way up into that groove. We have this valve hollow end up. Spring. 
and then the retainer is going to go in front of that spring. Make sure your spring is in the center of the door. Yeah, over here we have a cone shaped spring. We we'll want the small end up. And this valve kind of pops into the end of it. And then there's a sp uh, seat that goes on that. And I need to flat sand this a little bit. But the way I got mine out, I, vent I first tried to get a hook on a slide hammer and pop this out and it did not work. How I eventually got it out was I got a 3H16 tap and I tapped it down a couple of threads. Then I got a short bolt and a washer and I threaded this into there. Then I got two heel bars on it and popped it out. This sits in there just like so. And I'm gonna flat sand this. And then I'm gonna use the Arbor Press to press this back in there. It's a, I got a little bit more control with it doing it that way than trying to do it with a punch okay there it is in there then we have this spring and there's a hole over here on the, in the uh, pump this little leg right here fits down in that groove right there and then this just coils in on itself It's in there just like so. You pressure bushing and your seal in. Uh, the outer gear does not appear. There's any identifying marks. The inner gear goes with the recess facing in to the outside. And we just line up our ports. I've always just used uh, two <coughs> um, modulator um, valves from a 350 or 400 to line up my pumps. You can do it that way. You can use a lineup band, uh, just however you want to do it. It's just always the way I've done it. Um, we have. Two long bolts, medium bolt, two short bolts. They're all half inch. Short ones here. Medium one. And I got that right. The medium one over here. And the two long ones here.
Okay. And we need our gasket. Make sure we get this going the right direction. Right there, just like so. This is where our solenoid goes. Make sure that that is still up in there. You can test this 12 volts and make sure it's clicking and moving back and forth. Solenoid sits on here with two flathead screws. into here and then we just need to make sure when we feed this through the case that we do not get this wire pinched anywhere uh, put your o-ring on your pump a selective washer and two sealing rings that are hook and loop just like all the others all right Okay, I don't know if I've ever documented the early planet setup on these. It basically is the same. This goes down into your case. Four tab metal washer goes on the back. You have your snap ring. Uh, depending on which uh, training you have, which vehicle you have, what output shaft you'll have. This is the longest one that they make. This is for them great big boats that they used to make. Um, so we have that. Let's see what we need to do here. We'll go ahead and put our shaft back into our ring gear here. Short end of the taper up as always. back back here this is actually the later style bearings so somebody has been in here which is not surprising um, have three-piece bearing that goes together like so this is in the here three-piece bearing here goes on right there and our planet goes on top of that snap ring in the back See if we got that in there. Not quite in there. Yeah, it's pretty much in there. Then, boy, it's kind of hard to do so the camera can see this. Silencer ring. Four tab washer, uh, it could be metal or plastic. Make sure the tabs get in the holes. And use some grease to hold this in there. If 
plant it on top. Sprag assembly. Just notice the notches here. You need to face right into there. You think you can't do it wrong. Trust me, I've seen it wrong. You gotta really work at it, and I don't understand why people work at it to get it in there wrong. Let's see if I can do this away from me. Okay, this one here is kind of hard to screw up, other than the fact that this bevel end needs to be down and our notch here needs to line up with the notch here. What's up? Oh man, trying to figure out what we got over here. Well, I'll let you let me know. All right. Okay, and our sun gear goes in. We have another three piece bearing. Put these two pieces on there. So we're going to keep that from rolling off. We have the aluminum piston with our lip seals facing out towards us. These have to sit down in those cutouts. Now wherever you pick for your springs to go, if you put it there, then put the other one here and this one here. If you want to put it here, just do that. And put them there, you can put them here. Does not matter, just keep them evenly spaced. If you're going to build a racing transmission, uh, this is the piston you're going to want to use because you're going to want to put all of these return springs back in there so you'd have 12 of them instead of three. Uh, the plate that goes with this one has got a curve to it. The metal piston, the one that you can only put uh, three springs in it has a metal piston it's got a plastic insert and then it's got uh, actually I think you could put nine in there anyhow the plate for it is flat and we have our snap ring short end of the taper up again four ceiling rings are hook and loop like the others race lip goes in washer here could be fiber could be plastic could be metal this goes on top and when it's in there the planets I mean the supports gonna be turning counterclockwise and locking clockwise and there's our setup for the early style. All right, direct drum. I have a lip seal in here. The lip faces up towards you. Lip seal's here. The lips face up towards you. Make sure this ball is rattling around inside there. All right, our springs are loose on this. Container that holds those in. Short end of the taper is going to be up on our snap ring. Alright, then we have our steels. If you have any cutouts or teeth missing, 
you want to keep those all together. And this clearance is not going to come out right because these clutches are just too worn out. But you know, just make sure that your clearance comes out okay. Like this one's down to the middle almost. If you can get your clutch just about to the bottom of that where that this plate sits, which these are still coming out pretty close to that. Um, it's usually pretty close. Pressure plate, snap ring. Now the way I do these is uh, that's a little too loose. Clutch hub from the 400 that I took a 350 governor cap snap ring and I put on here and I make a handle out of that and I put that on here instead of that I take the this pressure plate out. Set this in here. Leave the snap ring halfway hanging out, something like that. And I use this to put it down into the case. It works pretty nice. On the back, back here, we have a uh, ring. The sprag goes with the lip down. This is actually a light duty sprag. You would probably want to put the heavier duty sprag in here. And you probably want to put it up in here and then put it down onto here. And this should turn clockwise and lock counterclockwise. I have another lube dam that goes in there, the retainer, and then the snap ring with the short end of the taper up. Keep the opening away from an opening. All right. Okay, I didn't uh, mention it before, but I should have. If your drum has a check ball in it, like that piston did, then your piston cannot have it. Like this drum has the check ball here. You want to make sure it's loose in there, so this piston has no um, ball in it. You can't have two. You can only have one. So, lip seal facing up towards you again. Lip seals facing up towards you again. Okay, the springs are about a hundred thousand shorter than the direct drum. These happen to still have the color on them, which is amazing. Okay, even though the hub had a problem. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and stick it back in here. I'm just gonna have to force this drum back down on there. Alright, short end of the taper back up again. Okay. The brass washer goes on the inside fiber washer goes on the outside you can put a brass washer out here also in fact they make uh, thicker ones from Sonax so you can get your uh, adjustment to come out properly uh, wavy plate on the bottom keep our notches together again go ahead and put a clutch on top of that wavy plate Come on, man. And I don't see any other notches, so it's not going to matter how we line these up. There are different thickness steels for this, so if you want to play around with your clutch clearance and get it proper, that's how you will do it. Uh, here again, you want to be pretty much at the base of that. You would want to keep this hub out 
while you're checking your clutch clearance otherwise you're not going to be able to get down in there to do it okay I think we're ready to stuff this back into the case here's our intermediates uh, it does have a wavy on the bottom so it's a wavy steel clutch then our steels and then our pressure plate and snap ring you have a tapered snap ring that goes on top of the center support when we get the planet set down into the case and the taper goes up I'm sure I will mention that again okay let me get the case and we'll get it back in together okay something I don't get to do much anymore uh, check a modulator get you a vacuum pump and stick your modulator on it and there's a couple things that you're going to want to check for and you want to make sure that the valve does move in the end of it so you can watch it or you can just stick your valve up in there pump the vacuum gauge up if it will go up and this one will not pump up unless my vacuum pump is no good I've had the valve stick in it before and it's it's pumping so this modulator is bad it will not pump up it should pump up and hold the vacuum and it won't do it so that's one way that you know this is bad otherwise if you can pump it up you want to leave it there for a little bit and see if it starts bleeding down so what this thing is doing is more than likely is it's sucking fluid through here and it's uh it'll burn it through the carburetor it'll just suck it it'll drain your tranny dry so um, you always want to check these and make sure if they are working properly I had a feeling this one was not going to the way it was bent up o-ring goes on it goes in your tranny this one is an adjustable style you don't see too many of the canister styles that were adjustable there is an adjustment in the end of it here and most of them were just a fixed deal you could not change how to. and I also had a feeling this was bad because it just keeps fluid just keeps coming out of this thing and usually it doesn't keep doing that so what's happening is uh, fluid that's been built up inside of here is leaking its way back down all right we'll see how this comes out down in the bottom of the case here is a bushing I suggest you take that bushing out and you, at the bare minimum, you put a Sonax no walk case bushing in there. They also make, Sonax makes a, a replacement that has a bigger bearing and you can get rid of that thrust uh, adjustable shim down there and the uh, brass washer that's on the back of the planet, it takes the place of that and you can adjust that up and down with shims. I suggest that you really do that but if at the bare minimum just put the no walk case bushing in it and get rid of that bushing uh, if you had the fretting ring that went underneath your center support on these real early models you don't but you would want that fretting ring to be in there go ahead and put your band in the lugs go up against right there I go ahead and I stick my screwdriver through the apply hole and I smack the band and seat it up into the anchors. If you're not doing the bearing, put your adjustment shim in 
if you're putting the bearing in, it's going to fit around the no walk case bushing. Make sure that this fits down around the no walk case bushing if all you're doing is that. Sometimes it does not want to fit properly and you may have to grind on some of these tangs to get it to fit in there properly. Make sure it is sitting flat. I use a pair of vice grips on my planet to lower the whole thing in. There is a spot on the planetary, and I should have shown that to you before. I'm going to set it in, but there's an angle on one of your lugs, and it sits right here. You just want to make sure that your feed ports are lined up. Here's that angle right there. The planet did not go all the way in, which is not uncommon. It likes to grab the band. And this one came out pretty stout anyway. Like it's not fitting properly in that bushing in the back of the case. So, that's probably why this is going in this tough. Normally you want this thing to drop right in and I might uh, let's go ahead and take the bushing out because I don't think it's going to drop. All right, the bushing that they put in there goes into the planetary. We are in, in the factory, I normally put the opening over here somewhere. I put it back over here. Uh, put your taper up. I'm gonna get down in there. Trying to keep from hitting the camera. Only bad thing about having to be right here with that mount is it's kind of right in the way. And I, well, I got it right. Still not quite down. I mean, we are close, but it is not down. Okay. Yeah. Wavy steel, I always put the notch at the six o'clock. If there's any other notches, go ahead and put them down there also.
and her pressure plate in with the step up. And I'll put the opening over here again. I would also recommend that you put the Torque Flight 8 727 forward or front clutch drum snap ring in here. It fits much tighter and it helps keep from blow them lugs out. Put your band in, anchor goes in that hole. Try to keep from grabbing the band with your drum as you're going in. does not feel like that. Okay, if you have trouble getting this to drop, you can shoot some air in the center sport and it'll help get your drum into there. drum won't jump up and down anymore once it's down. Pull your tool out. Put your pressure plate in and your snap ring all the way. Okay. I also forgot on the early ones Later ones don't have this, but there's a sealing ring down here on this shaft. Um, put that sealing ring in. this thing in there because I had a hell of a time getting it out. Okay, once it's down, there'll be just a little bit of a gap between the two drums. Go ahead and lube up your case and your pump o-ring. Feed your wire through there. Line your pump up. Okay, the original ones were 9 16 like that. They had O-rings on them. The later ones have washers on them and they are half inch. You can use them. 
just make sure that you have something on there. I don't, I don't care about this because it's just sitting on a shelf again. If you wanted to torque these down, 18 foot pounds. <coughs> and make sure your end plate comes out right. This one's not going to come out right. Oh, one thing I did forget, and I forgot to put it in there. Uh, when, I, when you're tearing one of these down, there's a little nail that goes through here and it holds this linkage and keeps it from moving back and forth. If you'll bend that over, it won't fall out. Uh, if you do forget to put it in, you can bend your one and stick it in there. Just bend it over. You just need something to keep this from moving back and forth. You can use a nail. You can use the one that came in it. Just bend it one side over. If you forget to stick it in, you don't have to pull your pump back out. Just get you one and bend it and you can work it through there and then bend it over so it doesn't come out. Just don't forget to do that because you don't want this moving back and forth and it will come out of your linkage. Our center support bolt, 3H 12 point. Do be careful with the 400 ones. They are easy to split. I tighten them down. And then I also have uh, seals that I put in and seal up the case right here. This is what they look like. They come in all kinds of different transmissions. Um, 204s, 200s, AXODs. Uh, I'll get you the part number. You can use the tool to put it in. You don't really have to have it. Just take a punch and you put it in the hole. You drive it down until it, it bottoms out. Don't get radical with it because it will just mushroom it out. Well, now it's wanting to stay in there. Uh, put one on each side. On your servo, here's a square cut rubber seal that goes right here. There's sealing rings that go on here. The ones that you get in the kit may be Teflon. The tighter they fit, the better you are. The Teflon ones don't tend to fit very tight. It'll work. Don't get too freaked out about it. If you have the metal ones and they still fit snug, and you, the ones that come in the kit are Teflon or plastic. Uh, you can reuse the metal ones, it'll work just fine. The gasket goes on here. Cover. Six half inch bolts.
Okay, your front servo, you got your spring, you got this cap, you got the pin, you got the washer, you got the servo. Here again, same with the ceiling ring. Now this style servo has to go with this style piston. If you change out the piston that has the little humps on this, this will be different. Alright, six check balls. Damn it. Yeah, where did you go? One, two, three, four, five. Where did I drop the sixth one? I guess it doesn't matter. goes right there. I don't know where I dropped it at. I got you have an O-ring on the pass-through connector. There's normally a little tab right here and there's a little slot in the case where that goes. Basically what this uh, tab right here is going to do is be over here. Not uncommon for these uh, tabs to break off. I silicone these in anyway. I use a good graded silicone, ultra black, something like that. Uh, put your gasket on, make sure it's the right gasket here. You put your plate down. And right, get your gasket for your solenoid. Two seven sixteenths bolts go on here. You can leave this loose. Oh, um, never, never mind. Thinking, thinking too far ahead. You can uh, put two bolts in here and line this up. And go ahead and tighten this down if you want to, or you can leave it loose. The kick down solenoid goes in that slot right there. The um, Man, I wish people quit calling me. The uh, stator solenoid goes in the bottom. The kick down goes up on top. Make sure that's locked in there. I got this turned. And I was afraid that when I got to bending all this around that that insulation would crack on there. And it did. Okay, the little tab goes over here. Alright, put your gasket down. tubes in your valve body. Get your tubes started in the back. Get your linkage lined up on your rooster comb. And then ahead and tap these in.
You have three 7 16 bolts that go in the valve body. There. down fill down inside of here gotta fish it up I'm trying to remember where that was at. And now we want to keep this away from the linkage. This is one of our lineup bolts right here. See our linkage is coming out. This little tab has to go in that hole. You want your detent in the center of your rooster comb. And I think I'm gonna put this up here so it, it keeps it Way away. Okay, on your filter, you'd want to put two O-rings. Yep, still fitting pretty snug. It's amazing for how rock hard that o-ring is there we go all right your pan has to have that indention right there this pan would need to be replaced finding one might be pretty hard so maybe would have to beat it out i don't know but this thing's gonna always leak i would uh Definitely put you some sealer on your gasket. Maybe even leave the gasket off and just put some ultra black silicone. Half inch pan bolts.
Okay, your modulator valve. Modulator, normally this is pointing straight up. The bracket goes on here with these little legs facing in, just like that. Put your O-ring on. Okay, back here on your governor, see how well this is going to work. You can make sure your gear is good, it's not loose and all that. When you're going like this, this little valve in here should be moving. This one's seized up. So when you have your gear off, it's a good time to go ahead and pull the uh, valve out and, and scotch bright it and scotch bright your bore and get it nice and free. And, but you want, you want that thing to move, especially when you push up on your weights. That valve should be moving. And I can reach in there, right in there and move that valve up and down, maybe. I don't know, it sees pretty good. So even though this gear is good, I probably want to take this gear off and replace it. And there, there, I got the valve to move. It's all gummed up. Kind of hard to get that on camera, I think. It's down. I might could get this freed up. Messing around with it a lot, but anyway, you want that valve to move nice and free when you do that. Put your governor in. If you're going to use the gasket, I would use sealer on it. Here again, it's a good time to use just some ultra black silicone, ultra gray, so, something like that. Half inch bolts that hold that on. Tail housing gasket, the same way. I don't have a tail housing for this one. Somebody already robbed it. So the tail housing gasket, you want to put some sealer on it or some good silicone on it also. Everything on this tranny, you're going to probably want a silicone except for maybe the modulator. You don't really want to silicone that, but your filler tube, all that stuff's going to want to have silicone on it because it always leaks your pass through your connector, your governor cap, your tail housing, pan, pans especially. Okay, I think we're pretty damn close to being done. We have a speedometer. There's a metal clip that holds that inner seal in there. 
they make a different design that presses in it's a much better seal I would put that in there the o-ring here your housing has to match your gear so whatever your uh, tooth count is <clears throat> this one fits a 40 through 43 tooth uh, speedometer gears you have to have the housing that matches otherwise you're going to eat up gears go ahead and silicone this it's going to leak also and then I will just go ahead and talk about it because you can't see it the bracket holds it right there on the lever seal you can go just about anywhere and get the tool to pull the seal out this one pulls it out you screw it in and grabs it you push this in and it pulls it out this is your installer make sure and get the lip I, mean, I thought I had one sitting out here, but I don't. But you want to get a, a flat blade screwdriver, small one, and you're going to want to work it up around the flat parts of this, where this linkage is. Get it around that first, and then use your installer to install it. Our linkage goes on here from the factory there would have been a plastic bushing in here uh, I don't know where you would find that nowadays good luck probably have to make your own and 9 16 on that to hold that in and uh, we are done with this unit